In the dim glow of twilight, the Bavarian city of Würzburg exuded an eerie charm, its cobbled streets winding between centuries-old buildings. It was in this quaint, tranquil city that Dr. Heinrichs Batz, a man of profound intellect and compassion, resided. A towering figure in the field of medicine, Spatz was renowned for his works on military field surgery and the treatment of infectious diseases. He lived a seemingly idyllic life with his wife, Annalise, in a luxurious mansion that overlooked the main river. For years, the Spatz mansion had been a beacon of benevolence. Heinrich and Annalise often hosted lavish gatherings for the city's elite, their home a sanctuary of warmth and culture. Yet, despite their outward appearance of contentment, the mansion harbored a chilling secret. It was the winter of 1833 when whispers began to circulate through Würzburg. It started subtly, with the disappearances of a few vagrants and the occasional livestock. Then, the rumors grew darker stories of figures gliding through the night, and villagers found pale and lifeless, devoid of blood. The local authorities dismissed these tales as mere superstition, products of the long, cold nights. But the townspeople were not so easily placated. Their unease grew when Dr. Spatz, without warning, sold his mansion and announced his sudden departure to Prague University. The sale was abrupt, and his hasty exit even more so. He left behind a city buzzing with speculation and fear. The Spatz mansion, once a symbol of wealth and generosity, now stood empty and silent. Its darkened windows seemed to watch over Würzburg like the eyes of a predator. A few weeks after the doctor's departure, the local police received a statement that shook the city to its core. Drive. Spatz's former assistants claimed that the doctor and his wife were vampires. These assistants, Hans and Friedrich were once trusted members of Spatz's household, privy to the inner workings of the mansion. They spoke of strange occurrences, of late-night experiments and locked rooms from which low, guttural sounds would emerge. They recounted how Heinrich and Annalise would vanish for days, only to return looking more youthful and vibrant than before. One evening, Hans recalled, he had been summoned to the cellar where Heinrich conducted his experiments. The doctor's eyes glinted with an unnatural light as he spoke of a new discovery, one that would revolutionize medical science. But Hans felt a chill run through him when he noticed Annalise in the shadows, her lips curled into a predatory smile, her teeth unnaturally sharp. The climax of their terror came on a stormy night. Hans and Friedrich were ordered to prepare the cellar for a special guest a wealthy merchant who had taken ill. As the night wore on, the storm outside grew fiercer, and the mansion seemed to creak and groan with an unnatural life. At midnight, they heard a scream. Rushing to the cellar, they found the merchant pale and unconscious, Heinrich and Annalise standing over him, their faces smeared with blood. Overcome with fear, Hans and Friedrich fled the mansion that night. They knew they could not stay silent and went to the police, risking their lives to reveal the horrifying truth. The authorities were initially skeptical, but the weight of the assistant's detailed accounts was hard to ignore. An investigation was launched, and the Spatz mansion was sealed off. Inside, the police found remnants of Heinrich's experiments, strange devices and vials of blood. But the most disturbing discovery was the hidden chamber beneath the cellar, lined with coffins, each containing a body, in varying states of decay. As the investigation deepened, the fear in Würzburg grew palpable. The city's prominent families locked their doors at night, and the streets emptied long before dusk. Everyone waited with bated breath for news of the Spatz couple, hoping they would be caught and brought to justice. Weeks turned into months, and the trail of Heinrich and Annalise seemed to grow colder. The police sent word to Prague University, but no one there had seen or heard of the Spatz couple. It was as if they had vanished into thin air. Yet. Strange reports began to filter in from neighboring towns of pale figures moving silently through the night, and unexplained deaths marked by bloodless bodies. As the mystery deepened, a young detective named Carl Weber took a special interest in the case. Determined to uncover the truth, he delved into the history of Heinrich Spatz, seeking any clues that might reveal the couple's whereabouts. His investigation led him to the ancient libraries of Würzburg, 
where he uncovered texts on vampirism and the occult, references to rituals and transformations that seemed to align disturbingly with the assistant's accounts. One night, as Weber poured over the dusty tomes in the dim candlelight, he found a passage that made his blood run cold. It spoke of a ritual conducted by a doctor in the 16th century, a ritual that promised eternal life through the consumption of human blood. The doctor had fled to Prague, where he was last seen merging into the shadows of the old city's labyrinthine streets. Weber's heart raced as he connected the dots. Heinrich Spatz had not just fled to Prague, he had followed in the footsteps of an ancient predecessor. The detective knew he had to go to Prague, to the dark heart of the old city, and confront the evil that Heinrich and Analyze had embraced. He packed his belongings and prepared for a journey that he knew would be fraught with danger. As he left Wurzburg, the city seemed to breathe a sigh of relief, though the fear of the unknown still loomed large. Weber's departure marked the beginning of a new chapter in the hunt for the Spatz couple, a journey into the depths of a darkness that had plagued humanity for centuries. As Weber boarded the carriage that would take him to Prague, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. The night was cold, the moon hidden behind thick clouds. As the carriage wheels clattered on the cobblestones, he glanced back at Wurzburg, the city now a shadow in the distance. He vowed to uncover the truth, to find Heinrich and Analyze, and to put an end to their reign of terror. Little did he know, the true horror of the Spatz legacy was far more insidious than he could ever imagine. The darkness was spreading, and the hunt had only just begun. Karl Weber arrived in Prague as the winter deepened. The city was a maze of ancient streets and dark alleys, shadows lurking around every corner. The Gothic architecture seemed to whisper secrets of the past, secrets that Karl was determined to uncover. His inquiries led him to the Charles University Library, where he spent days poring over old records and texts on vampirism, hoping to find any trace of Heinrich and Analyze Spatz. One evening, as the library was closing, an elderly librarian named Eliska approached him. Her eyes were sharp despite her age, and she seemed to recognize the intensity of his search. You seek the doctor and his wife, she said softly. They are not the first to come to Prague in search of forbidden knowledge. Karl's heart quickened. You know of them, Eliska nodded. There are places in this city where the light does not reach, where ancient evils still dwell. Follow me. She led him through winding corridors to a hidden section of the library, filled with dust-covered tomes and manuscripts. From a locked cabinet, she retrieved a leather-bound journal. This belonged to Dr. Johann Faust, a man who delved into the darkest arts. He, too, sought eternal life. Karl opened the journal, its pages filled with cryptic symbols and descriptions of rituals. One passage stood out, to transcend death. One must embrace the shadows, surrender to the hunger that consumes the soul. Eliska continued, Faust's knowledge was passed down through generations, hidden from those who would misuse it. Heinrich Spatz found these writings. He and his wife are somewhere in Prague, continuing Faust's work. As Karl left the library, journal in hand, he felt a presence watching him. The streets of Prague seemed alive with whispers, the air thick with anticipation. He knew he was being followed, but he pressed on determined to find the Spatz couple. He found lodging in a small inn near the old town square. As he settled in for the night, a knock came at his door. A young woman, her face pale and eyes wide with fear, stood trembling on the threshold. Are you the detective from Wurzburg? She asked. Carl nodded. Who are you? My name is Lydia, she whispered, and I have seen them. The doctor and his wife. They come to the old monastery at night. Lydia's revelation led Carl to the outskirts of Prague where the ruins of a medieval monastery loomed against the night sky. The place was shrouded in darkness, its broken walls and crumbling towers casting eerie shadows. He waited until nightfall, then approached the ruins, every sense on high alert. He crept through the overgrown courtyard, the cold air biting at his skin. Inside the monastery, the air was thick with decay. He heard faint voices and followed them to an underground crypt. The stone steps descended into darkness, and Carl's heart pounded with each step. At the bottom, he saw a dim light flickering. He hid behind a column and peered into the crypt. Heinrich and Analyze stood over a stone altar, their faces illuminated by candlelight. They were chanting in a language Carl did not understand, their voices a low, rhythmic murmur. On the altar lay a young woman, unconscious but breathing. 
Carl's mind raced. He had to stop them, but he needed a plan. He watched as Heinrich took a vial of blood and poured it over the woman's lips. Annalise's eyes glowed with a sinister light as she leaned in, her teeth elongating into sharp fangs. With a burst of adrenaline, Carl stepped forward, brandishing a crucifix he had brought for protection. Stop, he shouted, his voice echoing through the crypt. Heinrich and Annalise turned to him, their expressions a mix of surprise and amusement. You are brave, detective, Heinrich said, his voice smooth and cold. But you are too late. The ritual is almost complete. Carl felt a chill run through him. He had hoped to catch them off guard, but now he realized the depth of their power. As he held the crucifix high, Annalise advanced, her movements unnaturally swift. Carl backed away, but Heinrich raised a hand, and Carl felt an invisible force pin him against the wall. You cannot stop us, Heinrich said, his eyes burning with a malevolent fire. We are beyond your reach. As Carl struggled against the unseen force, he felt his strength waning. The room began to spin, and darkness crept into the edges of his vision. Just as he was about to lose consciousness, a blinding light filled the crypt, and the pressure holding him vanished. Lydia stood at the entrance, holding a lantern infused with holy water. The light seemed to burn Heinrich and Annalise, forcing them to retreat. Run! She screamed at Carl. With the last of his strength, Carl stumbled toward the stairs, Lydia closed behind. They emerged into the cold night, the ruins of the monastery silent once more. Carl gasped for breath, his mind reeling from the encounter. Thank you, he managed to say, turning to Lydia. But she was already gone, disappeared into the shadows. Carl knew he could not rest. Heinrich and Annalise were still out there, their ritual incomplete. The hunt was far from over. As he stared into the darkness of the Prague night, he vowed to find them, to end their reign of terror once and for all. Little did he know, the true horror of the Spat's legacy was just beginning to unfold. The ancient city of Prague held many secrets, and Karl Weber was about to discover that some evils run deeper than the darkest shadows. Karl Weber pressed on with his investigation, his determination now steeled by the close encounter with the Spat's couple. He spent days and nights scouring Prague, seeking any hint of their whereabouts. His search led him through the narrow alleys and shadowy corners of the city, each step filled with growing urgency. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, Carl received an anonymous note slipped under his door. It read, The final ritual will take place tomorrow night, at the abandoned chapel in the woods. Be prepared. The note was unsigned, but Carl recognized the handwriting it was Lydia's. The next night, Carl armed himself with every tool he could muster, holy water, a crucifix, a wooden stake, and a silver dagger. He made his way to the abandoned chapel, its silhouette stark against the moonlit sky. The chapel was ancient, its wooden structure worn by time, and it stood deep within a forest that seemed to breathe with a life of its own. As he approached, he saw faint candlelight flickering through the chapel's broken windows. He entered cautiously, the wooden floorboards creaking under his weight. The air inside was thick with the scent of decay and incense, a combination that made his skin crawl. In the center of the chapel, Heinrich and Annalise stood before an altar, the same young woman from the crypt now chained to it. Her eyes were open, filled with terror but unable to move or speak, paralyzed by whatever dark magic the Spatz couple wielded. Heinrich looked up as Carl entered, a cruel smile spreading across his face. Detective Weber, how predictable. You've come to witness the culmination of our work. Carl raised his crucifix, the holy symbol glowing faintly in the dim light. This ends now, he declared, his voice steady despite the fear gnawing at his insides. Analyze laughed, a sound that echoed like shattered glass. You are brave, but foolish. We are beyond your mortal tools. As she spoke, Carl noticed Lydia standing in the shadows, her face pale and determined. She nodded at him, and he knew they had to act quickly. Heinrich began chanting in the same ancient language, the air vibrating with dark energy. The candles around the altar flared, casting long, menacing shadows. Annalise advanced towards Carl, her fangs glinting in the candlelight. Carl threw holy water in her path, and she hissed, recoiling as the water burned her flesh. Seizing the moment, Lydia dashed forward and unchained the young woman on the altar, pulling her to safety. Heinrich roared in anger, the chant breaking as he lunged towards Lydia. Carl intercepted him, the silver dagger slicing through the air. Heinrich dodged, his movements unnaturally fast, 
but Karl managed to graze him, the silver burning his skin. With Heinrich momentarily distracted, Lydia dragged the young woman out of the chapel. Karl turned to face Annalise, who had recovered and was now seething with fury. She moved with inhuman speed, but Karl was ready, driving the wooden stake into her heart as she lunged. Annalise screamed, a sound that seemed to pierce the very soul, and then collapsed into dust. Heinrich, witnessing his wife's demise, let out a howl of rage and sorrow. He charged at Karl, but the detective stood firm, plunging the silver dagger into Heinrich's chest. Heinrich staggered, his eyes wide with shock and pain. You? Cannot. Stop us. He gasped, his voice a mere whisper. But the light in his eyes faded, and he crumbled to the ground, lifeless. The chapel fell silent, the dark energy dissipating like smoke. Carl collapsed to his knees, the weight of the ordeal finally catching up with him. Lydia returned, helping him to his feet and guiding him out of the chapel. As they emerged into the cold night, the first light of dawn began to break through the trees. The young woman, now safe, thanked them with tears in her eyes before disappearing into the forest. Carl and Lydia stood in silence, the enormity of what they had faced settling over them. It's over, Lydia said softly, though there was a lingering unease in her voice. Carl nodded, but his thoughts were troubled. For now, he replied, but there are always more like them, hiding in the shadows. Lydia looked at him, her eyes filled with a mix of relief and determination. Then we will find them, together, as the sun rose, bathing the forest in a golden glow. Carl and Lydia walked back towards Prague. They knew their work was far from over, but they were ready to face whatever darkness lay ahead, united in their resolve to protect the world from the ancient evil that lurked just beyond the light.